Willard Kindergartners. I would like to share some more weather tools with you today and I moved outside so we could enjoy the beautiful weather that we have here in Pasadena. So I want to just show you this tool one more time. Do you remember what it's called? Yep, this is a thermometer and it measures temperature. It measures how hot or how cold something is. And right now I am sitting in the sun and my thermometer is in the sun. But I wanted to let you know, if you have a thermometer outside, make sure it's in a shady spot because you want your, your thermometer to measure the temperature of the air. And if it's sitting in the sun, the, sun, the sun's uh, rays, the light from the sun is full of energy. And the, t the thermometer will start to absorb that energy and it will read a temperature that is far too hot. So if you have a thermometer outside, you want to make sure that you have it in a shady spot. So this is a weather tool that meteorologists would use. And I have three other tools that I made myself. They're homemade versions. I'm going to show you a picture of one that is a fancy tool that a scientist might have in their laboratory. And then I'll show you my homemade ones. First is a rain gauge. Now this is a picture of a rain gauge and all a rain gauge does is it sits outside during the rain and it collects rain and there's a measuring tool on it to measure how much rain falls. Well here's a rain gauge I made and all I did was I took a two liter bottle and I cut off the top and then I taped a ruler to it and that way when it rains I can look on the ruler and see how many inches, or in this case, how many centimeters of rain fell. Now, today is a sunny day. We're gonna get no rain today, but next week we're supposed to get some rain. So I'm gonna keep this outside and we'll see how much rain falls. I'll be able to measure it. Another tool that scientists use, that meteorologists use, is called a wind vane. Here's a picture of a wind vane that a meteorologist might use. And you can see it kind of looks like there's an arrow or there's a part that gets pushed by the wind when it blows. Well, here is a wind vane that I made. I used cardboard on the bottom and then I have a pencil. And in the pencil eraser, I don't know if you can see it, it's very skinny, there's a little needle. And the needle goes through a straw and the straw is attached to a piece of paper. I have directions on my piece of cardboard down here, and then I put it down. There's N is for north, E is for east, S is for south, W is for west, and I have this set up. I know in my house that north is in that direction. So when I put down my wind vane, I make sure the N is pointing towards the north, and the wind pushes against this big part, the front part of the arrow and it will push it in the direction that the wind is blowing to. So it's not windy at all today, but I'll show you how it works. I'll blow on it and you'll see how wind will push that arrow. So you're ready, here you go. So you see, when I blow on it, it points in the direction that I'm blowing into. So that's a wind vane. Another tool that a meteorologist might use is called an anemometer. So here's a picture of an anemometer that a meteorologist might use. An anemometer catches the wind and it spins in the wind. The faster the wind is blowing, the faster it will spin. Well, here's an anemometer I made. I'll show you, this part comes off. And I just took a piece of cardboard again as a base and I used a straw because a straw is hollow. And then I took a bottle cap and I pushed, a, um, I pushed a, a nail through it. That was something that I was able to do because I'm an adult. But if you ever do anything where you're using something sharp like that, oh my goodness, make sure you have a grown-up's help. But it goes through and then this nail sits down in the straw. And when there's a breeze, oh, there's a little breeze now. There's a little breeze now. Do you see when there's a breeze, it pushes against the spoons. I use spoons, but you could use cups. You could use something else if you wanted to make your own anemometer. And it slowly, there it goes. It slowly pushes it around. Now you might be able to see, I colored one of them red 
because if it's very windy, this will spin very fast. And I could take a clock and I could watch the second hand and I could see how many times does it spin around in 10 seconds or how many times does it spin around in one minute. And the faster it's going, the more times I'll see that red spoon go by. Otherwise it might be hard to keep track. So I wanted to show you my homemade science tools because if you're interested in the weather and you're interested in meteorology, you can make your own science measuring tools. You can make your own rain gauge, you can make your own wind vane, you can make your own anemometer, and you can study the weather. You don't need to go out and get special fancy laboratory tools. You can make your own. So thank you my friends for helping me think about the weather and think about weather measuring tools. I'll see you next time.